Hello, David. I am uh, reporting to you from inside a car, reading Awesome Nightfall, William LaFleur, um, on Psycho. And uh, I chose two poems that uh, kind of addressed impermanence or had some sort of uh, aspect of them that made me think of that. Um, so the first one I did was on page 46. Um, and uh, I'll read it in Japanese first and then in English. Tarachio no yukue o ware mo shiranu kana onaji ono ni musabarama domo. And in English, I wish I knew the fate of my father, and I'd like to know too if his place in flames will also be mine. And so uh, Lafleur kind of took this in the direction of um, looking at Saigyo's father and how he was killed and how somebody in the profession, uh, by definition of killing, may have big karmic burden um, that cannot be easily removed. So Saigyo kind of worries about his own future. And I kind of assumed at the, that Lafleur was saying at the death of maybe another warrior who had karmic debt or whatnot. But when I initially read it, I didn't really get the same interpretation as Lafleur. I understood it as, you know, how how is he going to die? Like, I mean, uh, sorry, I thought the computer died. <laughs> um, how is he going to die? Is he going to, like, fade into the dust? It's kind of like him addressing, wow, my father was here, then he vanished will I vanish in the same way by flames or whatever? So kind of just a uh, rumination on the impermanence of his life. Um, and the second poem I looked at was on page 59. Um, it says, while undertaking religious exercises in the Eastern region, um, Saigyo wrote this following in view of Mount Fuji. So in Japanese, Kaze ni Nabiku Fuji no Kaberi no sora ni kiete yukue mo shirano waga amoi kana. And this is in English. The wisps of smoke from Fuji yield to the wind and lose themselves in sky, in emptiness, which takes as well the aimless passion that through my life burned deep inside. So the wisps of smoke from Fuji yield to the wind and lose themselves in sky. And that's, uh, I mean, that's the image of change upon the mountain. Smoke losing, lose, lose themselves in sky, in emptiness is the next line. So going from presence to absence, the, the wind carrying the smoke. Um, and then he kind of parallels this to his life. Uh, and his aimless passions, so the next two lines, which takes as well the aimless passions that through my life burned deep inside. So kind of paralleling the change that's happening on Mount Fuji via the wind and smoke um, with his aimless passions that he's had within his life. Um, and, and he says that burn deep inside. So kind of which takes as well. He's it's kind of kind of applying that the same physics of impermanence happening on the mountain are also uh, happening within him, within his internal struggle of aimless passions burning. Um, that, that too is changing and they're somehow connected because the connecting word he uses. Um, so the wisps of smoke from Mount Fuji yield to the wind and lose themselves in the sky in emptiness, which takes as well, bringing with in his personal stuff, the aimless passions that through my life burn deep inside. So it kind of seems to me like as the mountain's changing, maybe through profound realization from his religious, uh, his religious exercises, staring at Mount Fuji, he realizes that, you know, sitting there watching Fuji, watching the snow billow away, the clouds and smoke billowing away, that also his, his internal struggles, he watches or feels them blowing away as well. So that's my thoughts on two of Saigyo's poems in regards to impermanence.
see you on Monday.